CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by GTE. We can do business with your business. McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. And by Lowenbrow, brewed in the great beer drinking countries of the world. This world calls for Lowenbrow. led 13 to nothing and now at the half they lead 13 to 7. Most importantly Phil Sims will play in the second half and when the score became 13 to nothing Hank the Giants had only one minute and 13. will kick off and George Adams is back at the goal line awaiting the kick. By the way, on that last drive by the Giants in the final 113 of the half, they had a face mask penalty against the Rams that helped that drive continue. And that was very important. Once again, this ball is going to have to be held by Urban so Lansford can kick the ball. until that final drive and a couple of turnovers stopped him. Adams took it on the three across the 20 to the 23 and for the Rams Ed Brady the tackler in the first half first downs were even looking the rushing yards for the Rams and the passing yards the Giants had the advantage and the turnovers two for the Giants and none for the Rams. I think I think basically the Giants have to be disappointed over the fact that they did not run the ball better than they did in the first half. They thought they wanted to do that. They thought they could do it, but they haven't done it well so far. Let's see what they do here with Adams running out of the tailback spot. He only got a yard. The tackler was Jim Collins. well they win you can say that for a lot of teams but the Giants in particular in that south they rush over 100 yards rushing in a game they are six and oh under 100 yards they're rushing they're 0 and three very dramatic and their primary runners are Joe Morris who is in there now and George Adams who is out at the moment we so just got rid of that and inside the 35 yard line that's the third turnover for New York today try to get it to Joe Joe Morris made the tackle on Johnson after he intercepted oh, he threw it right in his belly didn't he well here again Jack Mel Owens was blitzing on the play and he didn't have a chance I tell you with the wind blowing the way it is you better give your quarterback a lot of time to throw the ball be able to step and throw and follow through watch what's hap what happens here Wilshire is coming, number 54 coming. There is hit on the left side by Mello, one's number 58. Had nothing on the ball whatsoever. Johnny Johnson gets the interception, number 20. Now they're in great field position. At the New York 35. That was the fifth of the year for Johnson. Dickerson alone back. A toss as he runs left. Lawrence Taylor tripped him up and he got about two. Taylor first and then Curtis McGriff in the turnovers Rams none Giants three today and there's Bill Parcells the one thing he said to us yesterday he said we have to do a good job of staying behind uh, Dickerson so we can't take advantage of the cutbacks and I think from an overall standpoint really the Giants are doing a pretty good job of that second down and eight David Hill the tight end on the right side Inside the 15 yard line. He lined up tight end left, and Herb Welch tackled him. It was a crossing pattern. Welch. With Tony Hunter coming across from the left side. Watch him come. There he is, coming across man for man coverage. The defensive back does not get there in time. Herb Welch, number 27, and as a result, it's a big play down to the 12 yard line. 
Watch Smith, number 56, working on Burt, number 64. Burt gets penetration, but not until after he gets rid of the football. Trying to make the most of the interception. The Rams have a first down at the 12 of the Giants. Redden is the up back. Here comes Dickerson. And he had knocked down by reasons. He got about a yard. Or maybe a little more than that on forward progress. Ball carried by Dickerson. Reasons. There's Johnny Johnson who picked it off. And his brother Bob is playing these days for the Cardinals. Five interceptions for Johnson this year. Scoring in the second half. The Rams really get rolling in their defense stiffens in the second half. Second and nine. It's attention underneath and a big hit and the progress down to the nine yard line. That was Ron Brown, the wide receiver, who caught it. And Gary Reasons led the tacklers again. The ball's placed at the nine. It's a wonder he was able to catch that ball. He waited just a little bit too long to get the ball to him. He was in a crowd of people that time, but in spite of that, he got hit and maintained possession of the ball. Good job on the part of Ron Brown, number 89, coming across the middle. Here's a third down play. Third and seven. And incomplete. Ellard couldn't get down into the end zone. It was thrown incomplete in its field goal time again. Well, oh, that Taylor was trying everything to get to him. Yeah, he was, and very red and number 30 was really wide open in the flat, but Jeff Kemp did not see him. And he throws a ball to make sure it's not intercepted, throws it away, and now they're in a good field goal position. Well, this will be the third time today that the Giants have made the Rams settle for field goals rather than touchdowns. Dills will hold at the 16, a 26-yard try. He's kicked one earlier of 40 and also 31. No snap. Dills picked it up, spotted it, and the kick is good. That makes it 16 to 7. All of that followed the interception by Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen. Now, Jack, five seconds. Here we have Jack Youngblood, rule number 85, retired this year. What a great career he had with the Los Angeles Rams. Hall of Fame for him someday, Hank. Yeah, no question about that. Here is the kick from uh, the Rams and Mike Lansford. George Adams is deepest. Giants haven't been able to break many of their returns. There's Adams. Typical of what he's been doing all season long. He breaks loose, though, brother. He's a bundle to try to catch. 16 to 7. The Rams have been ahead throughout. Adams pinned into the corner again. And he went out of bounds, so fortunately for him, he was in the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 yard line. Next week in the National Football League, the Bears travel to Dallas. I wonder what their record will be. I wonder what the Dallas record will be. Washington is their opponent today, and the Rams play at Atlanta, and Tampa Bay will give the New York Jets a tussle. Check your local listing next Sunday here on CBS. Picked off the last time, Sims gets under center. back good for five yards as the tight end Bavaro caught it. Johnny could, Johnson hit him. I couldn't tell whether the ball was tipped a little bit by a defensive player or whether the ball just sailed but he had to turn around on the inside to make that catch. It was a good catch there by Bavaro. They really miss Zeke Moat on this giant team. Yeah they really uh, like him very very much and of course they lost him in a last preseason game against Pittsburgh I think. But uh, they think uh, he would have had a fantastic year. But, of course, that's always the case when you lose a key player. Second down and four. Joe Morris is hauled down from behind by Wilcher. Mike Wilcher is having some sort of an afternoon here. He's made some damage. He's 6'2", 240 out of North Carolina. So he's going to show the other North Carolina linebacker that he can play also. And you see Gary Jeter in there against his... 
of our team. And now you see six defensive backs in the game. They're down and four. Gray and Newsom are in the Rams' backfield. Tony Galbraith, number 30, come out of the backfield. They had a safety blitz, linebacker blitz. He comes in the inside and beats Wilshire, number 54. Makes a great move on the inside and watch him take off and go. He leads the National Football League in total receptions in the history of the National Football League. Great receiver and quick feet. For a running back, he's number one of all time. Here's John Morris. And Morris dies down to the 23. Carl Eckert made the tackle. What did the coach tell us yesterday that he gave Tony Galbraith a trophy in front of the club? Yes, he gave him a trophy when he broke the record and of course we drafted Tony back in 1976 our number two draft choice and boy did a great great job for us along with Chuck Muncie in New Orleans for two years but he's a he was a terrific running back but also a great great receiver which is very obvious. Second down and eight. tight end Mark Bavaro. Let's watch the, the tail end of that play. Yeah, we'll see the end of it. And you can't tell for sure whether Johnny Johnson uh, gets, a, gets a shot on him or not with that right hand. But uh, had the ball been thrown perfectly, it would have been a touchdown. And he had plenty of time to throw the ball that time, Jack. He did. He's 11 out of 20. No intercepted. One touchdown. This is third and eight. Ran it down. He was going to try to get it downfield to Adams. He was throwing to Adams at the goal line, but perhaps Desjardins got a hand on it. And it's fourth down, and Eric Schubert comes into the game. Fourth down. Schubert was five for five last week. He'll make his first try today. How about the story that Parcells told about Schubert the day before the game last week? He said, "Are before the game?" He said, "Are you nervous?" He said, "Yes, I'm nervous." He said, "Well, relax." He said, "I'm not nervous about kicking the field goal. I'm nervous about my high school team. I don't think they're ready to play." <laughs> this is a 40-yard try. at 16 to 10. Here's a good picture of Tony Galbraith who leads the National Football League as far as running backs are concerned receiving wise has caught 417 passes which is the best in the history of the National Football League. control of him or something but I can't understand why he didn't uh, pitch it out there to him Curtis McGriff number 76 was right there to make the play this is a critical drive for the Rams because I think the Giants are getting some momentum and they're starting to make things happen and uh, if they can force him to kick here they'll wind up with good field position he probably 
he didn't have a good grip on the ball, so he just tucked it away, and it's second and 11. He's seven out of 13, as you see. First down. What a big hit was made. Coming in was Ron Brown, and he was blasted by Herb Welch. Number 27 out of UCLA. I've never seen Brown uh, catch the ball inside like he has today. That's the second catch he's made inside. He got a good thump every time he made the catch, but he, hang, uh, he was able to hung, hang on to the football that time and did a good job. Third down and one. Arizona State, the school for Ron Brown, the Olympian. Bill Bain is in as the other tight end. Now David Hill. Redden leading the blocking pass play by Kent. Looking for Hunter. He airs it out for Hunter and overthrows incomplete, and the Rams will punt. That was worth the gamble, but they had him well fitted. The official didn't see Hunter go down the field and push off. I saw him. Right in front of the official. The official did not see it. Should have been a Pass interference part on the offense, Tony Hunter. Welch and Patterson were the convoy downfield for Hunter. And back to do the punting is Dale Hatcher, his fourth of the day. Good average. Let's take a look at his drop now. Very important with the wind blowing like it is from side to side that he gets a good drop. He's out of Clemson. Some of you folks will watch Clemson play next Saturday here on CBS. He kicks it very easily. A lot of rhythm. He took it on the 27. Out of bounds at the 41. Good return by Phil McConkie. Gary Reason, 55, really made a great block to help him go to the outside. Sean Miller is the injured player, number 98. And Gary Reasons really got a great block on the punt return, number 55. I think probably, hopefully, he just got the wind knocked out of him, but it was a great shot. Here we see it right here. Watch left of your screen here. Watch Gary Reasons, 55, blocking Sean Miller, number 98. There's the shot. And he's able to go to the outside and get a good return on the play. Uh, Sean Miller is walking off the field in good shape. Nothing seriously wrong. Just got the wind knocked out of him, I'm sure. 43-yard punt, 13-yard return by McConkie out to the 41-yard line. We have 6.40 remaining in this third quarter. Hank thinks the Giants are starting to get a little momentum. Yeah, I really think they are, and they're able to get a much better field position, and they're able to open up a little bit more than they could in the first part of the game. Marathon, and a fake to Morris. set up the last touchdown. Yes, he did. Now here, it's a play-action fake again. Not a very good exchange and a good mesh between the back and the quarterback, but he gets outside and throws the ball right over the top of the defensive back, right on the money to Manuel, and he makes the catch in a first down. Good execution on the play, and they moved the pocket on that last play. Jack was very successful. Ball's at the 33 of Los Angeles. him get off watch Eckern trying to get his position there's Mark Bavaro and he comes back for the ball which is a good move Nolan Cromwell misses the tackle and he's finally tackled by Johnny Johnson number 20 yeah. first down to the 41 then the 13 then the 19 here's Joe Morris to the 14 on the left side by Brad Benson, number 60, and also Billy R, number 67. There you see it. And Joe Morris pops right through the hole in good shape and gets as much out of the play as he possibly can. But again, great blocking by Benson, number 60, and also Billy R, number 67. All rest at the 14, it's second and five. 
Giants try to get the lead for the first time today. They throw by six. The middle. That's very close to a first down. I know Manuel again with Gary Green with a hard tackle. First down and goal from the eight. Manuel hit the middle area in good shape and then slid to the open area. Gary Green finally made the tackle, but a very good move by Manuel, number 86. Well, the Giants don't want to settle for a field goal here. 436 left in the third quarter. First and goal. receivers on the outside. Sims to Morris to the five. Al Owens stopped the play. For 58. He doesn't hold back when he plows into that line, does he? No, the, he's got a great start. Gets off the ball very quickly. And as I mentioned before, you know, he's short and it's hard to see him behind those big linemen. Let's look what the Giants have done in the third quarter. I think it's a tribute to their coaching staff and their adjustments at halftime. Well, I think that's true. Plus the fact they're hanging in there tough. They're showing a lot of poise, a lot of determination not to make mistakes, to stay in there tough and hope they can be in the game in the fourth quarter. Second down, Morris again squirms to the goal line, but not over. He was stripped up and lost his balance and couldn't get in. It's third down, third and goal. Chris Godfrey, the right guard, number 61, gets off the ball in good shape. Doug Reed gets a hand on him here. Yes. Bart Oates, and number 65, also does a good job. Desjardins got a hand on his foot. Third and goal. Vito Cab is the other tight end. He's on a wing. Carthon is the up back. He goes on a wing. Third and goal from the one. Carthon in motion. Pass to Morris. here by number 44 Maurice Park Carthen watch him into the hole good surge by the right side of the offensive line Godfrey Nelson or they get off the ball in good shape along with Bobaro they made something happen Joe Morris popped it right in there for the touchdown high snap they get it down the kick's good by Schubert and it's a giant lead for the first time Joe Morris, and we'll watch what the coaches did when the ball went over the goal line. Parcells leading for the first time today. He's in that two-point stance, waiting for the official to make a call. Happiness. Not a lot of animation, but I know he feels good inside about that touchdown. Robinson, of course, a very solid on the other side. He goes behind in this game now, 17-16. just got the score. He's 15 for 42 yards. And with 303 left in the third quarter, the kickoff. By Schubert, high and headed for Ron Brown. Or by Charles White. And a big stop at the 20-yard line. They wanted to kick it away from Brown, and they did. The last scoring drive, seven plays, 59 yards, three minutes and 37 seconds. reception of the day the tackle by reasons and Carson the inside linebackers yeah the Rams have had the ball 17 times on first down and have only thrown the ball five times that was a six time I think they have to do more of that 225 left in the third quarter 
Ballard comes to the right. Tony Hunter is on a wing. Dickerson cut back and went across the 35, and he got four yards. Well, Terry, by Dickerson, Welch, and Marshall made the stop. Second and five. We welcome the CBS audience, which has been watching the Chicago game, 21 to three over Detroit in the third quarter. Here's our story here. We have a good one coming toward the end of the third quarter. Jeff Kemp rolling out and throwing and knocked down by Williams. Moments ago, the Giants, who once trailed 13 to nothing, took the lead on this touchdown. Maurice Cartha, number 44, in motion, gets a good block on the outside man, good surge on the right side, and Joe Morris pushes it in the end zone for the touchdown. The score at the half was 13 to 7 in favor of the Rams, and the Giants have 10 already in this third quarter. At the moment, their defense is on the field. Next time alongside, I'm Jack Buck. Barry Redden is in the backfield for the Rams. Third and five. Redden blocking. Here's the pass incomplete. And the Rams are going to have to punt the ball. Barry Redden wanted to slip out into the pass pattern, Hank, but he stumbled and got knocked down. Yeah, so there was penetration on camp right about the time he was trying to get rid of the ball. He got a shot there by Casey Merrill, number 71. It's a sellout crowd here at Giants Stadium in New Jersey. Temperature 68 at the start of the day. Kemp 9 out of 18, and Dale Hatcher putting. This will be his fifth. Phil McConkie is back to get it. With 127 left in the third quarter. Unmolested, he hangs it high. It's well covered. You better call for a fair catch, kid, and it goes over his head and goes out of bounds inside the 20, and that's not unusual for Hatcher. Before today, Hatcher had kicked 12 out of bounds inside the 20, and the young kicker from Clemson just knocked that one out at the 18. Here's what happened in this game thus far. Eric Dickerson scored from one yard out after the Rams recovered a fumble. Rams led 7-0 at the end of the first quarter. Field goal by Mike Lansford, 31 yards, another 40 yards, 13 to nothing. A pass to Bobby Johnson, 13 to 7 at the half. Now the Giants about to score the Rams 10 3 in this third quarter, and they have a one point lead. Little Joe Morris caught the ball for about seven. Tackled by Jim Collins. That's about the third or fourth time they run that play. It's a play action fake, faking to Joe Morris inside, number 20. And then after the fake, he goes right into the middle area between the linebackers. Watch him now. They fake to him. Look at the linebackers, 55 and 50, go the opposite direction. Right in between them. There's Eckern coming up to make the play. Misses. And finally, Jim Collins, number 50, makes the tackle. Bill Parcells likes that. It's second and three. Morris dies for about two. It's going to be third and one. He was tripped up. And couldn't stay on his feet any longer. Reggie Doss, the defensive end, got a hand on him. There's Nolan Cromwell. He just got his ankle retaped. He's one of the directors in the backfield of the Rams when they're on defense. And Newsom, Vince Newsom, is in there in his stead. The Rams trying to stop it on third and one. The Giants don't have to snap the ball. We only have five seconds left in the quarter in there for a first down to the 30. First down Giants at their 30. The tackle by Collins. That's the end of the third quarter. A good quarter for the Giants. The score, 17-16 Giants. We pause for a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Light Beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. And by Canon Cameras. They make the great shot simple. There's 
is our score, and we just start the fourth quarter, 17-16 Giants. There's Eric Dickerson. He's had a pretty fair day, nothing uh, scintillating as we usually see him pulling off. This is the number one defense in the National Football League. He's working against today the Giants. You know, a lot of people didn't think he was going to play today, and he had a bad ankle, but talking to him before the game and yesterday, he said his ankle felt fine, and he was ready to go. Now the Rams are on defense, and it's a first down for the Giants. Dennis Harrison checks in for the Rams. Greg Meissner is in there. Here's a first down pass. Outside of the underman, Carthon, and incomplete. Let's see what's going on elsewhere. Jim Collins covering in that last play. Minnesota leading 17-6, fourth quarter over Green Bay. Cincinnati by seven over the Browns, 17-10, fourth quarter. Buffalo blanking Houston, 20 to nothing, third period. 7-3 Seattle over the Saints in the fourth quarter. 17 to 7, the Eagles over Atlanta in the fourth quarter. 24 to 6, New England leads Indianapolis in the third quarter. And single has been blanked in the fourth quarter, trails Tampa Bay 13 to nothing. Second and 10, a delay to Morris. He got five. It'll be third and five. More scores for you. The last tackler, Dennis Harrison, along with Mel Owens. Pittsburgh 30, Kansas City 14 in the fourth quarter. Steelers in good shape. And the Bears undefeated, leading 21 to 3 in the fourth quarter. They play at Dallas next week. That game will be on CBS. And there's Lawrence Taylor along the sideline. He plays a lot of positions, right linebacker, left linebacker, sometimes in the middle. Ray and Newsom check in for the Rams in their backfield. Third and five. bragging a while ago about Tony Galbraith what a great receiver he was and this one zinged right through with Mike Wiltshire covering and the Giants will punt. I think he took his eye off the ball just momentarily just enough to lose the ball. You talk about making a blink. That's what it was a blink and it's all over. Drop the ball now they're in a kicking situation. You're fond of Galbraith aren't you? Oh he's a great great player and a super kid. Sims 15 out of 27 as he goes to the sideline 225 yards one touchdown two intercepted. Lendetta pumping the ball. And Ellard, a dangerous man, fair catch, 15. Henry Ellard called for a fair catch at the 15-yard line. Well, the Rams trailing by a point get the ball after a 50-yard punt. As you can see by that statistic, the Giants don't blow it very often, do they, Hank? No, they don't. They're, they've reached a level with their football team that they've grown considerably, and they just hang in there tough. And just the, the important thing is that you don't lose the game, that you don't give things away, and that's what they're doing very well. Here's Johnny Robinson. They're, they're basically the same philosophy. They're, if you're going to be in the right side of the column with them, you've got to beat them. They're not going to lose the game. And that's the great thing about Johnny Robinson teams. Southern California here, they don't lose the game. Sitting in the backfield with Jeff Kemp. Two tight ends, Hunter and David Hill. Three wide receivers. And off the hands of Hunter. Thrown high and away to Tony Hunter. Incomplete. Coming over after him, Gary Reasons along with Perry Williams. Well, I think anytime you throw a crossing pattern like the one we just saw to Tony Hunter, I know the quarterback can't always be right, but you want to throw the ball low enough below the chin at the number so he can catch the ball and continue to run in stride. Then he, then he has to raise his arms above his head. Then, of course, it gets to be a problem. Second and ten. And an elated Dickerson and a whistle stops play. Ran into the arms of Harry Carson. Number 75, offense, second down. Second and 15. Her Panky moved before the snap. You know, I think you have to, uh, at this stage of the game, I think Panky has really done a terrific job so far of blocking Leonard Marshall. Because we haven't heard too much of Marshall, and he's without a doubt one of the best in the business. Number seven. Ball's back at the 10. where they have to be careful. They can't pop it up down here and make a mistake. No game for Dickerson. A flag is down again. Elvis Patterson. 
Anderson came up very strongly, number 34, from the corner to make the tackle. Holding number 72, offense, penalty decline. That's a, that's a good call because it it's only been, half the distance right. to the goal, Jack, and so they're a good, it's a good uh, decision to turn down the penalty. Third and 15, so here's an early critical play for Los Angeles. Duckworth comes to the left. We might even see him run a play here, Jack, to make sure they don't make a mistake and get the position to try to kick the ball out of there without any trouble. delightful guy we talked to him yesterday before practice and he was excited about the way he's playing well there's a flag to be dealt with here Hank let's see what ball. the ball was returned to the 30 by McConkie now Jerry Mark Bright says tell me what it's all about Those of you who are watching that Chicago Detroit game, the score is still 21 to 3 in favor of the undefeated <laughs> Bears, who just intercepted a pass. They have a and they're in the fourth foul quarter. After possession change, they have a personal foul, unnecessary roughness on number 25, Los Angeles, number 71, Giants. Penalties offset by rule. First down. Now the fans who are howling at the officials earlier in the game are happy. It was after the change of possession. Then we see another shot of uh, Leonard Marshall. I don't know whether people realize around the country, he's 6'3 and weighs 285. Played his collegiate football at SAU, S L S U. And boy, what a great player he is, and he's getting better and better all the time, especially on obvious passing situations. Giants lead by one. They want a touchdown to go ahead by eight. And well in motion. Here's a give to Clark. Flag goes down by the umpire, and that's usually holding. Ben Montgomery is the umpire, and he threw the holding flag. Mike Wiltshire made the tackle. Marcells doesn't like that. Takes it back to the fourth. Number 65, offense, first down. Bart Oates, the center. You know, I talked to Bart yesterday, and I said, would you rather play against a defense where they have somebody on your nose or some uh, defense where they have an even spacing and just a linebacker on your nose off the line of scrimmage? I was surprised to hear him say, I'd much rather play a guy against a guy that's on my nose because then I know where he is. When he's not there, then, of course, I have to anticipate, and it's a lot more difficult. That was the first penalty against the Giants today. The Rams have six. Here's Joe Morris. Strong tackle by Gary Green, the former Kansas City player, number 27. Well, Gary by Morris. 
Billard was pulling on the play. Watch the left guard, number 67. And instead of going to the outside, look at Gary Green, number 27, a great force. And he gets penetration. And anytime anybody gets penetration on a wide play, you're out of business. You're not going to make any yardage on the play. Byron Williams, the wide receiver, missed the block on Green. And so it's second down and 23. that if they're both making an honest attempt to make a play on the ball, it's not pass interference. We'll get a chance to look at this closer, but let's see what happens on the play. The ball was underthrown, too, and that should be a factor, too, Jack. Yes, it should. I think it has to be called only if he has an honest attempt or honest uh, opportunity to make the catch. I don't think he could have that time because the ball was thrown short. Let's see what he calls. He did it. see the play Irvin number 47 not playing the ball he's playing the man now he looks for the ball and the ball is coming down the ball is way short yeah. I don't know how you could call that according to what the new rules are supposed to be Jack he looked for the yeah. ball well, don't argue with me I agree with you yep number 47 defense first down first and goal at the four if you literally interpret the rule the way it is this year, he was making an honest attempt to make the play. I think it's a bad call. Ball is at the four. Unless he gave him, Hank, a little shove before he turned around and looked. It might be, yeah. You couldn't see the left hand. That might be a possibility. Of course, you have to give the official the benefit of the doubt because he's right there on the scene of the action. Okay, we have 11.43 left in the game. The Giants leading by one. drew the flag he wants a lawyer let's watch it again let's watch his left hand before he turns around let's see if he might have gotten that hand on him it doesn't look like it he's trying to bring it up to make a play of the ball that was thrown short now the intent has to be there uh, with regard to concentration on the ball but I thought he turned around he's playing man for man coverage when the ball comes down he's got to play for play the ball three tight ends for the Giants Marthon and Morris in the back two Two. And Maurice Carthon is something. He played in the U.S. Football League here, and he played about 21 games. And then walked right into the Giant camp. He's an Iron Man. Talking about Iron Man, talking about Joe Morris, talking about strength. He power cleans 320 pounds, bench presses 415 pounds, and full squats 550 pounds. He does that five times. Boy, that's strong for a guy. It's 5'7", and weighs 195. Balls two and a half yards away. We'll call it the three. Vito Cab goes in motion. Morris to the goal line. Touchdown. surge and they take it in for the touchdown they're kicking the extra point and it is good now the giants who trail 13 to nothing lead by 8 24 to 6 24 16 here's another look from behind the defense straight ahead surge look at godfrey number 61 gets a good block at the point of attack good surge on the left side by billiard Bart Oates, Godfrey Nelson. Ball landed right on the goal line. 
Here's Billy Parcells on the sideline. Well, a mild clap, nothing uh, over rain bunches. Look at a solemn look on the part of Johnny Robinson. He's got to be concerned. Had a lead early in the game, and now he's behind 24 to 16. The interference ball set that one up. Second touchdown of the day for Joe Morris. Of Syracuse, like he was just discovered here, right? Yeah, that's right. Of course, they always like the little guy. He's always the underdog, and when he does well, like Joe Morris has done, why well, uh, he's got to be a big favorite. I enjoy talking to him. He's one of the few guys in the league I can look eye to eye to and talk to. <laughs> Eleven minutes left in the game, and Eric Schubert has to tee it up again. There's another look at Morris. Number two draft choice in 1982. Played his collegiate football at Syracuse. Hit by Schubert. And a line drive, and it bounces high, and it's into the end zone, and out comes Brown. Oh, watch it, folks. This is one of the fastest men in football. Schubert told me yesterday he couldn't tackle him. He's right. This is going to be out of bounds inside the 15. made the play watch him run to the right break to the inside almost stumble and fall there's Taylor in hot pursuit he tries to tag him but it doesn't work goes down the sideline here's Schubert he tries to make a tackle and slides right off like he's got peanut butter on his arms he goes right down the sideline for a big play 89 yards to the 11 of New York by Brown Schubert looked funny trying to tackle him. Didn't he? Yes, he did. He tried. Didn't get his arms wrapped around him. 10.41 left in the game. Eric Dickerson last to about the six. In that Chicago-Detroit game, Kevin Butler kicked a field goal. Less than six minutes oh, remaining. 24-3, to three, the undefeated Bears are still on top in that one for those of you who switched over to this game and just saw that brilliant kickoff return by Ron Brown. Tony Hunter, number 87, really made a nice block in the last run by Dickerson. And Dickerson got five. Second and five from the six. Dickerson again. Lost this time. Forcing up. Kenny Hill that time, 48, came in and made the play. Tony Hill was trying to block on the play that time, number 87, but didn't succeed in getting it done, and for that reason, no gain in the play. Watch Hunter, number 87, on the right of your screen. Watch Dickerson, watch 87. He bounces off of Kenny Hill, and Kenny Hill makes the tackle, number 48, along with some other help from the inside. And it is third down. some points not necessarily a touchdown and they find it incomplete out of bounds great try by Duckworth covered by Kenny Hill I tell you I don't know how they got the ball in at that time there were three on two and the two receivers on the outside they had a slot formation look at look at Robinson is he upset he is really upset about something He's in bounds. He thought he had both feet in bounds. Both feet in bounds. And and he might have, been, might have been pushed out of bounds. But have to. And Duckworth struggling to get up. I'd like to see this one again. So let's do it. Boy, Kemp, I, th I tell you, you talk about throwing a frozen rope. Good protection that time. Marshall is trying to get up in the air. But look at the ball thrown on the outside. He has the ball. One foot in. And he knocked out. I think that should have been a touchdown. You're right. He was knocked out by the defensive player. And as a result, didn't have a chance to get both feet in bounds. And it should have been declared a touchdown. Did he Did he hang on to the ball? It I looked like he, he had possession. You have to have possession and both, both feet in bounds. But he didn't have a chance because he got knocked out by the defensive back. Well, I agree with John Robinson. Here was his immediate reaction. Look at it. It looks like he's going to attack the official. Look at that. He comes down there. 
He's melting the wax in his ears there, isn't he? Well, they're going to rule it incomplete, out of bounds. I thought that he not had he not been hit, Duckworth would have gotten the other foot down in. I think so too. I think you're absolutely right, and that's what the rule says. I think. Oh but, yeah. The, yeah, no the question man about him it. Out. Yeah, knocked him out of bounds. There's no way he could get the other foot down. They talk about dotting the eye. He had no chance to dot the eye, meaning to drop the foot in the left foot in uh, the end zone never had a chance because he was knocked out of bounds and that's Bobby Duckworth who is being tended to they told us that the acquisition of Duckworth really set up this football club and gave them the balance that they needed well I think any time that you can get a receiver from the San Diego Chargers or the Los Angeles Raiders I think you got to take him because they're well schooled well disciplined run patterns very well and they catch the ball Lansford has kicked from 31 40 26 125 and it is good so now the score 24 to 19 and a lot will happen before it's over we have 914 left in the game let's watch the Duckworth effort again Lansford four for four. Here we see him on the outside again. He gets the ball. It looks like he has possession. He's bringing it down. Gets one foot down, but he's knocked out of bounds and he can't get the other foot down. So it's impossible. So it should have been a touchdown, I think. Well, I'll throw in with you. We're either both right or both wrong. There's Phil Sims. He knows now that he can't sit on the ball. He has only a five-point lead. You don't happen to have a black and white shirt, do you, Jack? <laughs> headed for the training room. I don't know precisely the sort of injury, so we'll just wait. Wait till Johnny sees the picture. He didn't get a good view of it from where he was in the, at ground level on the far side of the he field. He saw enough. But evidently he saw enough where he thought, just like we did, that it was a touchdown. Now the kickoff. And out comes Adams. You'll see a fired up Ram defense here. And these Giants, Hank, cannot afford to sit on it, can they? Oh, no, they can't. You know, they've done a good job of throwing the ball on first and 10. The Giants have had the ball 26 times on first and 10, and have thrown the ball 14 times and completed 10. Pretty strong. Well, as good as this game is, more fine action coming up today on CBS. The Cowboys 6-3, and three, same record as the Giants, at the Redskins, who are 5-4 and four and coming off a strong win over Atlanta. Dallas trying to bounce back after losing to St. Louis. The ball is at the 19. See if they throw the ball here on first and 10. They do it again. Outside, and he had to get it out of Cromwell's route. Threw it away from Manuel. In Chicago, in the game with the Bears and the Lions, they're at the two-minute warning with a score 24-3. to Favor the Bears. Looks like they're going to travel to Dallas with a perfect record. Here's more scores for you. Cincinnati by 10 over Cleveland in the fourth quarter, 20 to 10. And a blank for Houston, 20 to nothing. Buffalo fourth quarter. Figure that team out, huh? Houston I'm talking about. Second and 10. Motion by the tight end. Here comes Morris. And the linebacker Jim Collins jumped in there. More scores as third down comes around for the Giants. We have 8.50 left in this game. No more scores for you at the moment. We've got you right up to date on most of them. Third down and eight. Five-point difference in the game, Jack, and sometimes you have the mistaken impression that you got to score five times, which is ridiculous. You're one play from being back in the game and being ahead in the game, talking about the Rams. That's what that kickoff return by Brown did. Brian Newsom are in the backfield defensively. Blitz, Newsom coming in the outside. He sucked that ball right out of the air with his hands. Man for man coverage. Newsom was blitzing on the play. Johnny Johnson covering on the play. Throws the ball on the outside. Look at the way he caught that ball out in front with his hands. George Adams, number 33. Johnny Johnson, number 20, making a making the tackle. Manuel comes to the right side. Byron Williams is left. See if they throw it throw again on first and ten. They've been doing an awful lot of that and been very successful. by Owens. And a 
substantial gain. Oh, Atlanta's made it close. Fourth quarter. He goes by three, 17-14. Gerald Riggs with the with the last score. On a one-yard run. New England walloping Indianapolis. Took them a while to get going, but they're ahead 34-6 fourth quarter. And they're a hot team now. They're playing well. Tony Franklin just kicked the field goal on Tampa Bay. Blank St. Louis, 16 to nothing. Into the fourth quarter. And you know for Tampa Bay, that would be their first win. Another first down. Bob Carpenter. Tackle by Johnson. He blew out of there. Boy, Billy Art, it looked like number 67 got a great block on, on Eckern. See if we can see it. Yes, he does. And he cuts back. Look at him cut back on the play. Good running on the part of Rob Carpenter, number 26. Cut back on the, on the part of Carpenter. Six and a half left in the game. Carpenter again. And he picked up three. Tackled by Jim Collins. More scores as you watch the clock. Down to 620. Pittsburgh by 12 over Kansas City. 33-21 fourth quarter. Gary Anderson just kicked the field goal. And that's the last of the scores we have available for you at the moment. Second down and seven Giants taking us to the six minute mark. The way the Rams are pursuing Jack, boy, some kind of reverse would be a big play because they're really chasing like crazy trying to get to the ball carrier. Here's one to the up back Carpenter. Manuel had been in motion. A final score. The Bears are undefeated. They are 10-0. They won 24 to 3 over Detroit today with that game at Chicago. Reggie Doss, the last tackler. All right. There's Phil Sims trying to figure something out on third down. You know, I'm talking to Sims uh, yesterday in the locker room. I uh, asked about his physical condition. He said, My knee bothered me a little bit, but I'm throwing better than I've thrown a long time. I feel very, very strong. My arm feels great. This stage of the season. Third and four. Ball is deflected and it's fourth down. And they're too far away to try the field goal. So the Rams will get it with 5 11 left in this game. And that's a lot of time. A lot of time for the Rams. And they better kick it away from Ellard, hadn't they? I would think so. They're going to try to kick it out of bounds, I'm sure. In the middle of the field, right footed kicker, depending on where the wind is coming from on the field, it's been going from. Uh, the kicker is left to right, so if that's the case, he'll try to kick it out of bounds to his right side. If it's changed, then a normal procedure would be for him to kick to the left side. There's Ellard, number 80. Sean Lundetta will kick it, the rookie out of Towson State. Oh, it was almost blocked. And it's not touched, and it goes into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. The Giants almost got a lucky bounce. Who was that? Oh, that Leroy. No, that was Gary Green who came very close, wasn't it? That was Newsom. Almost blocked it. Buffalo, 20. 5.03 left in the game, and there's Eric Dickerson. He knows that he's going to be doing some work in the next five minutes. In the first half, the Rams moved up and down the field with a run, but not in the second half. No, it's changed, and they have to give the Giants a lot of credit. We made some adjustments, played very well in the second half. There's Johnny Robinson. He told us yesterday that his other quarterback, Steve Dills, is the kind of guy who could come off the bench and lead a drive, but they stay with Jeff Kent. Will Bain, number 62, is playing left tackle. Dickerson. Out across the 30 for a first down. Boy, he made that look easy. Byron Hunt tackled him. Here's the final score for you. Seattle beat New Orleans 27 to 3. Seattle's sixth win. New Orleans is now 3 and 7. You know, the Rams have a strong philosophy. They think that if it's close in the fourth quarter, as big and strong as their offensive line is, they're going to be able to push people around and make something happen and move the ball in the fourth quarter and win the ball in the fourth quarter. Let's see what happens. That was only their third first down in this half. That's a forward pass. Right 
Marshall, again, is very, very tough to block when he's coming inside. Let's see if he's coming inside. There he is. He goes inside of Bain, and he comes off the ball very quickly, and he gets penetration. He gets penetration. Hey, it's all over. School's out. He's going to get the quarterback. Bain told us yesterday, he said he comes inside all the time. I can handle it. Well, he didn't handle him that time, and that time, of course, the way he came inside, the guard should have turned out on him, and the tackle turned out on the linebacker. They didn't do it. A big draw and the pass. A wide open Hunter. Dropped it. Wide open at the 35 of New York. You know, it's something very usual for him. He had his hands turned wrong that time, Jack. He knocked the ball, the ball down. Instead of having his right hand up and a left hand below it, he had him reversed, it looked like, and that's why he didn't make the catch. Well, that'll let's, drive the coach crazy. Yeah, let's take a look at this. See if he's got him upside down. Yeah, he has. Look it. He goes back for the ball instead of letting the ball come to him and catch him, have the right hand up and cushion it with the right hand and bring it in with the left. He had him turned around that time. Kemp is 9 out of 22 and 0 for his last 6. Third and 10. 418 left. A flag is down. Pass is caught, but Barry Redden out of bounds at the 40. That's not enough for a first down, and a flag has been thrown. That's got to be holding, too, the way they dropped the flag, where they dropped it. Let's see if that's what it was. Holding is right. Now, they could decline the penalty, but then it would be fourth and two, and the Rams might gamble. Holding number 62, offense, third down. That becomes third down now. It was against Bain. Trying to stop the rush of Leonard Marshall. Tampa Bay blanks St. Louis 16 to nothing, and Tampa Bay wins their first game of the year. And that hurts the Cardinals, who are four and six. Another final, Green Bay over Minnesota, 27 to 17. Boy, what a reversal there. Third down and 20. They gotta throw the ball inside, Jack. The Giants are happy to let him have 10 yards because now the Rams have to punt with four minutes left in the game. Well, they had to do something inside, Jack, because the deep, deep backs were very far back that time. The middle was wide open. Whether you run or pass, they chose a high percentage kind of a play with a draw, and they made good yardage, but not enough for the first down they're going to have to kick. Down lineman Jerome Sally made the tackle along with Herb Welch. Here's the kick to McConkey. Dickerson is over 100 yards, 24 rushes, 107 yards. With that last rush, 101 yards. And McConkie called for a fair catch. A flag is down. McConkie took it at the 25. So the Rams with only three first downs in this second half. You can't win like that, can you? No, you can't. Penalty evidently coming up against Los Angeles, according to the player reaction. There's Bill Parcells. He's trying to win his seventh game, and then he'll say, well, I'll go home and watch Dallas and Washington play, and they can do whatever they want. That's what is fun, when you're able to win a game and then go home and enjoy just watching somebody else play, especially in your division. You don't have to worry about anything until after the game's over with, and you have to worry about preparing for next week's game. Back judge is Tom Keller talking it over with Jerry Mark Bright. The umpire Ben Montgomery. We have an illegal use of the hands foul on number 22 on the kicking team. First down. That's Vince Newsom. And the penalty. And a first down. There's Johnny Robinson. Not much is going right. Rams play at Atlanta next Sunday. Folks in New York or San Diego will not see that Dallas and Washington game, but the rest of the nation will see it here on CBS when this one is over. Here comes Joe Morris. Looks like everybody else a little bit tired, and he's getting stronger. Yeah, he is. You know, when he, when he rushed like he did last week for all that yardage, he went right over to... 
the strength coach. There you will see it again. Watch Billy R, number 67, coming through and block Eckern, number 55, at the point of attack. And look at Joe Joe Morris go right through there, would, would, right through the arms of a would-be tackler, and makes the first down. Or close to the first down to second and one. Picked up eight. 2.45 left. Giants leading by five. Up back Carpenter did not get a first down. What were you saying about that weight machine? Well, when he when he rushed for over 100 okay. yards last week, he went right over to the strength coach and said, I owe every yard I made to the squat machine. And that's where I've gotten all my strength. That's been great during the offseason, and he attributes that conditioning program to the success that he's enjoying so much this year. They put in the three tight ends. Vito Cab joins Mark Bavaro. Conrad Goody is in there. It's third down and a yard. We're coming up to the two minute warning and the Rams are not going to use any of their timeouts. We have two minutes left. Third and one confronts the Giants. They lead by five. John Robinson knows he's in trouble trailing by five with two minutes left. Even if he gets the ball back he'll need a touchdown. Not just a field goal. Meanwhile he can't get the ball and the Giants have third and less than a yard at their own 45. When we resume the Rams have two timeouts remaining the Giants three. Giants trailed 13 to nothing at one time in this game 13 to seven at the half at a 10 point third quarter. The play right before the half to Bobby Johnson really turned the whole game around for them. They really caught fire. And they've been tough ever since. Third down in the yard. And in motion Morris gets a first down and there goes a flag. A flag came down. That will be a first down unless it's against the Giants. It's going to be against the Rams. Looks like offside. Let's see what he calls. Offside. offside. Defense. Defense. First down. First down as Joe Morris took it out. Actually, they ought to take the penalty. They are going to take the penalty. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. And get more yards out to midfield. With 158 remaining, and they'll start the clock again. With the snap of the ball after that penalty. Giants will be very conservative now. They don't want to lose the ball in any way. Carpenter is good at hanging on to that ball. Meissner wrapped him up in a hurry. He got a couple. Yeah, the Rams have to call a timeout. And they do. Well, by Carpenter. And now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Well, Jack, it was a comeback by the Green Bay Packers that stunned Minnesota. Three touchdowns the last 12 minutes. Mark Murphy snaps this one off and returns the Tommy Kramer pass. 53 yards for the touchdown that sealed it up. 27-17, Green Bay a winner. They're now 4-6. and six. Let's go back to Jack and Hank. And it puts Minnesota at 5-5, five and five, and all of those people are chasing the Bears, who are 10-0, and oh, and Detroit's now 5-5. Five and five. I'd like to be in the spot the Bears enjoy at this point of the oh, season. They're all smiles. Mike Ditka and his staff, they're all very happy and justifiably so. They've really done a super job with the Chicago Bears. Want to go to Dallas and watch the Bears play the Cowboys next Sunday? That'd be exciting, except we're going to be in St. Louis doing a Philadelphia game, right? Right, and Philadelphia apparently is going to win, well, Three points ahead the last time we checked, and uh, they'll be five and five if they do it. Coming up next, we have the Cowboys at Washington. RFK Stadium, there'll be some noise over there. And if the Giants can get some help from the Redskins, the Giants might be in first place all to themselves when the day is over. Ball at the 48, second and eight. Bootleg by Sims. Wilcher. What a good game. He stayed in bounds also, and it kept the clock going. The great thing, boy, I tell you, that Wilshire, Mike Wilshire, number 54, he's played a terrific football game. You talk about a response. He got caught in the inside and responded and reacted to the outside and still made the play. A great play, really, by number 54, Mike Wilshire. Third and last timeout, charge two. The Rams. 
Terry O'Neill is the executive producer of CBS Sports. Charles H. Milton III, the senior producer. Today's game produced by Mike Arnold, directed by Bob Dumpy. Associate director, John Fortunato. John Pumo, the field technical manager, and the others who are involved here today telling you the story from Giants Stadium. Clock is stopped at 142 left, and it is third and three confronting the Giants when we resume. They leave by five, 24 19 over the Rams. Well, the 49ers could do themselves some good, apparently, Hank. They have a record of five and four. They were three games behind. They could end up two games behind when the action Yeah, there should be strong motivation for the 49ers tomorrow night when they play the Denver Broncos in Denver. I understand it's snowing there, Jack. They had some snow. We've had a lovely day here in New York. I'll tell you, Bill Parcells has to be, feel good about his team being down like they were early in the game to come back like they have. He said he didn't know for sure whether they had grown to that level or not to be able to withstand that kind of adversity and hang in there tough and play. They sure did that today. Third down and three. Bill Moore has stumbled a bit and failed to get the first down, and the clock continues to run. Rams cannot stop it. Well, Gary, my mother. Now the Rams will really be coming after this punt by Lendetta, won't they? Yeah, that's their last, last hope. They've got to do a good job of rushing the punter, trying to block the kick. Trying to make something happen, but in the pro in the process, they cannot take a chance of roughing the kicker and giving them possession of the ball again. They've got to take the angle. They've got to reach about a yard and a half out in front of where the kicking spot is of the punter, and they know that by the scouting information. If they take the right angle and get good penetration, there's a, they got a chance to block the kick. And they'll take a penalty right here. The 30-second clock runs down. They'll take off five yards, 58 seconds left. Well, the Giants have done a very good job of controlling the ball once they had the lead. Delay of game, number five, offense, fourth down. The last time the Giants punted, Vince Newsom came very close. Tonight on CBS and following the Dallas-Washington game, 60 minutes, murder she wrote, crazy like a fox, Rapper John M.D. They're coming after him, but Lundetta hangs it high. Covered and out of bounds with 51 seconds left. I guess the Giants are pretty happy with their new rookie kicker, aren't they? Oh, yeah, he's done a terrific job for him. And going into this game, he averaged 45.1 per kick. Number Boy, one. Strong. Number one in the NFC. Well, the Rams have no timeouts in 51 seconds, and they need a touchdown. They trail 24 to 19. We had a couple of critical plays in this game. You mentioned the one, Hank, where Bobby Johnson got the touchdown pass just before the half. And the one on which Duckworth was injured when it looked like he was bumped out of bounds. And the other one, of course, was a pass interference down there on Irvin. That was a big play. On the 16-yard line. Four-man front for the Giants. Short pass. And the clock will run. That's a first down. They have time. They can stop it. Hurry up offense, 40 seconds left. Under caught the ball. Tackle by Andy Hedden. 34 seconds. Whoa! And Elvis Patterson came rushing to it. We tried to get it out to Ellard. That stops the clock with 25 seconds left. You got excited, didn't you? Well, it looked like I saw Patterson coming over. It looked like when he released the ball, he didn't see Patterson. I thought Patterson got a good enough jump to make the interception. But it was thrown a little bit too low. Merrill, number 71, was the one who put the pressure on Jeff Kemp that time, number nine. Ball is at their 30. The Rams have 25 seconds left and no timeouts. his second of the year. That's a first turnover by the Rams today. And it hardly mattered. Didn't look like they were going to get it done anyhow. Hank. There's Bill Parcells. He's a happy man. And these Giants have 
have a record of seven and three and they just say to the Cowboys and Redskins well knock yourselves out brothers there, there goes the bucket of ice water Carson dumps a bucket of ice water I couldn't tell who who dumped it on but that's the procedure they've been going through the last few weeks every time they win a game they dump water on one of the coaches on the sideline with just about uh, this time left in the game that'll take us down to zero Dallas plays and Washington next here on CBS Dallas did not score in their first possession in that game this one is history Marcells and Robinson with a handshake Kemp finished 10 out of 25 for 130 yards for Hank Stram, Jack Buck, Giants Stadium, the final 24-19 Giants. Stay tuned for the second game that most of you will see. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station.